Uncle Creepy tells your tales. Holly was sleeping, snoring softly. I reached my hand out to gently pat her head before turning the page to my book. We're sitting at the beach. It's a nice day out. Hello, my name is Sharon. I work for Linda, Holly's owner. I usually walk Holly twice a week, sometimes three times a week depending on how busy Linda is. It's been about seven months since she told me about the night Holly saved her from what could have been a gruesome murder. She told me what really happened. But to keep people from thinking we were crazy, we stick to the Creeper story. I'm reading from my favourite book, the first of a promised trilogy, strangely enough about the point of view of death. I'm sitting here reading and suddenly jump from my phone going off. Holly notices and wakes up, lifting her head and looking at me. I pet her and she lays back down. I grab my phone and answer it. It's Linda calling. She says I should bring Holly home soon. I'm not due to bring her home for another hour and a half, but Linda sounded a little upset. So I put my things away, gather up Holly, and head away from the beach. I'm about to hang up the phone when I hear something in the background, before Linda asks me softly to stay on the phone with her till I get Holly home. Her voice has completely changed from concern to straight up terror. The beach is about a 20 minute walk from Linda's depending on rather or not you walk the bike path or the main roads. I decided to take the quicker route and run the bike path. Holly and I begin jogging and I'm trying to talk to Linda to keep her calm till I arrive. About three minutes later, I hear her stop breathing. This gets me pumped and I say her name a few times before I hear her again. She says only two words before the line is disconnected. He's back! I stop for only a second or two before realising who she's talking about and I drop Holly's leash and take off running. She's a good dog and follows right behind me. I think she knows something is up too because she starts to run ahead of me. We get to Linda's and the door is locked. I quickly pull out my spare key and open the door. Linda is in her room, sitting on her bed, shaking and crying almost hysterically. Holly jumps onto the bed and lays on her. She barely notices. I go up to her, out of breath, and shake her shoulders to draw her attention. She looks up at me, and I almost see the horror in her eyes. I asked her what happened, and it takes her a minute or two to calm down before she can speak. She said she saw him again in her room. I asked for the whole story, and she told me that she had come home from work for lunch and to run some extra errands that I wasn't able to do having Holly. Her room has only one small window, so when her light is off, it does tend to get pretty dark. As she was passing her door, it creaked open a bit. This caused her to come back and investigate. And when she entered, she saw him standing by her window. He was facing away from her. She said he spoke to her, saying softly with the low pitch of a voice that no human can possess, and told her to sit down. She did so, and as he turned, she got to see him in his fullness. Black hooded robe, hood covering his face, rope around his waist that resembled a spun spider's web. On the end of it was the hourglass, the white sand. She could now see clearly that it was about halfway through its ending point. He spoke again, which made Linda freeze. You got lucky last time he said. With a shaky voice she responded, How do you mean? He took a step closer to her and looked down at her. She couldn't see his face, but his eyes were an icy blue and had what appeared to be a faded light glowing from them. You were to be collected during our last meeting. Had it not been for your animal companion, you would have been. Who are you? Linda asked softly. I am what every mortal fears. 
the darkness lurking in every life. No matter the age, the sand represents life. Once it's out, I appear. What is your name? Asked Linda once again, filled with fear. I am the Soul Collector. And you're here for me now? No. If you would not have run, you would have been hit by the very car that you ran to. What you are unaware of is the pothole just a few feet from you would have caused the driver to swerve and you in the path of his vehicle. Let sidebuck reverse your sand flow. But I promise you this. I will return again soon. With that, she said after a pause, he disappeared. She's been sitting on the bed ever since then, pondering and frightened. She said she was afraid to even leave her bed, let alone her house. I told her I would stay with her for a while. She liked that idea. A week later, I'm out at the grocery store getting ready to pay and leave. Linda still hasn't left her house, but has been walking around it as if nothing has been wrong. I can tell she is still uneasy, and I try to help out when I can, but there's not much I can do. I leave the store and walk back to Linda's, look back to see an ambulance drive by with its flashers on, but no siren. It was weird that it didn't have a siren, but they do drive by often, so I didn't think much of it. I get to the end of Linda's street to see the truck parked in front of her house, along with the police cruiser, and rush up to see them going into the house. It didn't take me long to get there. I put the bags down near the fence when the officer approaches me and I tell him I've been staying there and he pulls me aside. I see Holly next to her doghouse outside. She's on her leash. I suppose Linda put her there shortly after I left. The officer informs me that Linda is gone. I immediately became upset and asked what had happened. The coroner came out just as his assistants were putting her body into the truck and he shared words with the officer. He came back shortly after and told me something that bugs me to this day. He said her heart stopped suddenly and her position was agitated. She had literally been scared to death. I now have Holly. I often wonder if what Linda saw really was real. They didn't know what had scared her enough to stop her heart. The house wasn't broken into. The dog was tied up outside and there was no way to tell if someone she knew showed up and whether or not she was met with foul play. They say that it was most likely a visual fright than a sound fright, but they can't figure out what she might have seen. But I think I might know. Hi everyone, it's Uncle Creepy here. I hope you've enjoyed this latest episode of Uncle Creepy Tells Your Tales. And I just wanted to say a couple of thank yous before I go. Uh, first of all, to Krista Mason for this sequel to The Walk. And she just told me today that this is actually now going to become a trilogy. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing what happens in the third installment of The Walk. Secondly, I want to thank Holly Houghton, who is the lady in the video, in that little sequence as the Grim Reaper or the Soul Collector and uh, she's done an absolutely fantastic job of doing that face and body painting it's what she does she specializes in that kind of creepy art and it's it's a really really big passion of hers uh, i'm gonna leave a link in for her facebook page and also keep an eye out because she's going to be doing her own youtube channel and that's pretty exciting because i'm going to be working with her a lot on the videos and i think it's going to be great so this is your Uncle Creepy saying good night and I'll see you soon.